So today on BK House Sports, we are here doing a brand new series on the channel where we're doing positional players in each different sport. Now, obviously, as you see in the title, we are doing a rugby league today. We're doing the NRL, and I have a big special guest. Uh, he's also here for the front row forwards, but today we're doing the hookers. We've got Clarky. How you doing, champion? Yeah, really good. Thanks for having me on, man. This is going to be another exciting one. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, a lot less this time, because obviously the last one was 32 players, and now we've yeah. got 16 players. But this is a pretty critical <laughs> pretty critical position, man. This is, a, this is probably would you what what would you ideally for yourself say is the most important position on the field and it doesn't have to be hook up just saying in general mm -hmm. who is your most important position i think halfback but then when you think for a halfback to see to be successful he needs to receive quality ball from the hooker which exactly. makes them the second most important in my opinion yeah i think fullbacks are exactly like they're really great to watch but i don't think they're as important as your hooker i think the halves are great but they don't get the ball without the hooker i think the hooker is just the the crunch of the team, the soul of the team, yep. and uh, without a good hooker. Look at the Titans, for example. You know, there's uh, question marks about them being a quality team because they like the hooker, but look at the other, the rest of the players. They're all pretty decent players everywhere else, especially in the forwards. You know, they've got a nice little young back line, but the, because they've got a uh, bit of a question marks around the hooker role, people still doubt them. So I feel like, yeah, I, I definitely think that for me, the hooker role is, is the most important. But, uh, you know, uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see where we put them because there are a lot of quality hookers here. And, you know, there's also some that I wouldn't really... Uh, it might, might be better as the water boy. Uh, but that's my words. That's my words. <laughs> but guys, uh, I will throw this out there. We will have a different opinion to you. We aren't going to insult you or your team or uh, insult the player that greatly. We're just going to say our opinions. Everyone's opinions is fair. We're going to have different opinions to you. So... Let us know in the comments section your thoughts. I hope you I hope you do enjoy. But yeah, throw in your opinions down below and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, but obviously, as you guys can see here, we've got elite, quality, do the job, not that great and unproven. So let's get into it. All righty. So first up here, mate, we've got, uh, we got Apicorsal. Apicorsal Tosuviti. Uh, I personally, for me, right now, I'm putting him in elite. Yeah, I can't argue with that from what we've seen last season. Obviously, you know, went to the grand final, Looked exceptional. There was even talk he might overtake Cookie there for the blue spot at one stage. Mm. Um, anything but Abby Coruscant in elite for me um, is crazy. He has to be elite. But that's that's the good thing. You know, that's the good thing about this sport right now is that, especially for New South Wales. I know New South Wales got beaten by, you know, the worst Queensland team ever. And, you know, I know that... Uh, and New South Wales didn't win, just to repeat that. And also, New South Wales didn't win against Queensland in the 50-50 competition, uh, just to remind everyone that New South Wales didn't win. Uh, but it's good that Api Cotisau, obviously, was uh, was giving so much pressure to Damien Cook, because Damien Cook is such an unreal player, and we'll get to him in a second. But it's just so good when you have a quality player as Cotisau fighting for that spot and gives the Cook the pressure. And to show, that shows how good Cook is. <laughs> Yeah, no, spot on a dozen. And, you know, Damien Cook, I mean, we'll obviously get onto it in more depth later, but he's got his work cut out because there's another young yeah. hooker in the NRL right now that's pressing for his Australian spot, in my opinion, also. 100%. That is spot on there. Uh, Blake Braley, mate. Blake Braley probably got him in the not that great category. Um, he, he definitely does the job, but I just think when we compare him to other hookers and as the list develops, <laughs> you'll sort of see why he's in that not that great range. Um, he could be in do the job. I wouldn't argue too much if you put him up in that next tier, um, but I'll probably sit him in not that great at this stage of his career. I, I, I'd put him in not that great. And, uh, you know, as we say on all these episodes, guys, as we say on all these videos, Use this, if, if Blake, you happen to see this, mate, use this as positive criticism to say, go out there and prove us wrong. You know, prove us wrong. We're happy to be proven wrong. This is just our thoughts right damn well now. But I would put him in not that great. I think that, like you just said, in comparison to a lot of the other hookers that we've got on this list, you know, there is some real quality in this position and we need to have somebody in each different position. And I would probably put him on the lower end of the 16 clubs as we currently speak. Um, but definitely room for improvement there. All righty. Next one up here, we've got, uh, got Cameron McInnes, mate. Cameron McInnes, uh, the dragon. The dragon, he's got, there's, there's, there's things about him that's, uh, you know, going on behind the scenes though, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Um, you know, he's actually asked the club if he can test his value on the open market and the club remains in the hunt for Andrew McCulloch and um, now rumours are saying they're keen on Nathan Peets. So they're keen Nathan on hooker Peets. for some reason. Oh. So a little bit more going on there, but I've probably got him at the absolute top of quality. I don't quite have him in that elite bracket. Um, in fact, I don't want to give too many surprises away, but I don't have too many hookers in the elite category, only a handful. And Cameron McInnes for me is just outside of elite. He is on the absolute verge. You can 100% argue for him being elite because he's a fantastic player. I think 
with a full preseason. At he hooker. was also the guy that was challenging Damian Cook for a while. He uh, was. For that New South Wales position. He was, but the reason I've got Cameron McInnes at quality is not his fault. It's just the fact he was taken out of hooker to play lock at some stages last year to compensate for Ben Hunt, and that's not his fault. Yeah. But if Cameron McInnes plays a full season at elite, back to a 25-round season this year, um, I think he'll go back up to elite. But for now, absolute top of quality for me. Yeah, spot on. I don't think you could definitely... You definitely couldn't put him in do the job. He's one of the, the more quality hookers. And I 100% agree with you in regards to there's not many elite. There's a lot of quality here for me. Mm. Well, I, I don't even know. We'll go through it. But for me, I definitely have him right up the top there. Actually, there could actually be quite a few do the jobs here, to be honest with you. But no, I definitely have Cameron McInnes as one of the top players. Uh, he has been pushing for that New South Wales spot. But now that Apicotasau has come through, he doesn't really even get a word in. You know, he doesn't even get a look in anymore. And yeah, I okay. understand it. There, Apicotasau and Damian Cook are two players on their own, you know, who are just, you know, next level right now. So no, 100% spot on there. I think uh, Chuck in quality. And we've already, we've already started getting a little bit of a mix going here. We've already started getting a little bit of a mix. Next up, guys. Next up, we do have Damian Cookie man, the cook man, Damien Cook. I think we're going to have to throw him straight in the lead. Uh, would you put him above Ali Cotasau or not? Yeah, I think for me, obviously, we're not including Cameron Smith because he's not signed to an NRL club currently. Um, so that for me means Damien Cook is still the best hooker in the game. So he's above Cotasau for me, just. Well, because, like, uh, I agree. I agree. I'd put Damien Cook as number one, but because uh, Apple got a sale as Fiji, I'm putting him up not top. But just FYI for mm-hmm. everybody else who know out there, you know, uh, Damien Cook is, is number one, but uh, because Apple got a sale is Fiji, we're chucking him in the old number one spot. But uh, let's move on to Harry Grant. Here he is, the, uh, the young stud, the young stallion. Look at him flying. You know, where, where are you throwing in uh, Harry Grant? This one is probably going to ruffle a few feathers, but only quality. And that's because we've only seen one season from him. Was that season amazing? Yes, by every sense of the word. What he did in Origin in Game 3, um, to me, indicates that he is the future Australian hooker over Damian Cook, who I rate as the best hooker. But for now, just the fact that he's only played the one season, I think it would be disrespectful to Damian Cook and Chorus how to have him up there in the elite category with them. And so I'm putting him at the top of quality with Cameron McInnes. Mm, that's a tight one. That is a tight one. I, do, I would put him above Cameron McInnes. I think that there's definitely massive argument for elite. The only reason I'm going to agree with you here and not put him in an elite is because, like you just said, we've only got the one season to go off. But he has shown definitely elite status already. The, the ability to. But because it's only been one year and... Mind you, he did play with one team that he's not playing with this year. Now, I know that he's now playing at a better team with better yeah. players around him. It still is a change of scenery. It still is a change of system. It still is a change of product. And I know that he's going to go under Craig Bellamy. He's going to be fantastic. But until I actually see it with my eyes, you can't actually 100% back in that it is a solid fact that he's going to be elite after one year. You know, there's a thing called second year syndrome in sports where players play fantastic in their first year and then they disappoint second. Do I think it's going to happen? Absolutely not. Harry Grant's the man. But I've got him in higher end of uh, the top, top, top of quality. Above McInnes. Have you got him above McInnes? I've got... (laughs) See, I'm looking at my top... How dare you? How dare you? I know what you're saying. I'm hookers now and I do have McInnes at four and Grant at five. Um, But realistically, like, there's an argument to either way. There really is no correct answer because they're both fantastic in their own way. Um, I think McInnes right now is the better player. But I think at the end of next year, Harry Grant will undoubtedly be the better player. Yeah. See, look, I disagree with that. But we've got him in quality either way. Like, it doesn't really matter. You know, either way, throw him in first or second. It's the, it's the same old. Next up, we're going to go with Jacob Little. So he's the, uh, the guy basically coming in to, to take over from Harry Grant, mate. Uh, gee whiz. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw him in. Uh, I'm going to throw him in not that great, to be completely honest with you. Yeah, I'm probably going to go one lower, unproven. And that's just because he's just suffered so many injuries throughout his whole NRL career. He's never had to be an 80-minute hooker. And therefore, it's just unproven as to what the Tigers can expect from him. Um, One thing I can promise Tigers fans, this is a little bit savage, um, it's not going to be anything close to Harry Grant. And that's not really disrespectful to Jacob Liddell. That's just saying we've got someone really special here in Harry Grant. Um, really it's sp- big boots to fill is what the thing is. And oh, I feel yeah. like it's like when you go up for a you know a talent show and you come out after the best show of the the best That's exactly the show. Like how is he going to be able to improve on that? And if you don't improve on that, people will hate on you for not improving on that. And that's why 
that, that's another reason why I guess I would have him in not that great because I think he's just coming into a situation that he's not going to be at first of the Tigers for me. Well, you'll see my prediction video before the season starts, guys. But the Tigers for me aren't that great. And I don't think he's got the players around him necessarily that's going to be able to help him shine either. So I think he's coming into a not that great situation. I don't think... I, I, I have a not that great. But if you, if you want to throw him an improvement, uh, you can do it. Yeah, just cons- also considering our rules where one player must fit into every yeah, category. Yeah. If there was one unproven hooker, um, he's, I think he's the least experienced hooker of the starting hookers that are available. Um, and as I said, he's unproven as an 80-minute hooker, where almost everyone else on this list that we see here is an 80-minute hooker. Um, yeah, fair. We do. Which we- puts him in unproven for me. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'll, I'll put him in there for, for, for that reason. But uh, if we were to put him there, I'd put him in that, that section. Next up, we've got Jake Friend. This is, uh, I think this is actually really difficult. I know where I put him. Where would you put him? But I, I think this is actually a difficult between, between three. I'm looking at quality, but then I'm, I'm, I'm thinking how much the Maroons changed when Harry Grant came on that field. Yeah. And you know, you don't want to base it off one player, uh, one game, sorry, because then the reverse argument is, well, how many premierships has Harry Grant captain his side to? Mm-hmm. For the fact that he has captained three premierships, I think we need to, we need to f- exclude the one game in Origin where he didn't play so good and Harry Grant sort of stole the show. And we just need to focus on the fact that he has captained him, his team to three premierships and therefore he has to be quality. But off current form, he hasn't been... Yeah. Well, this is off current form, mind you. This is off right yeah, now. You know, I've got to is- go the absolute top of do the job. I'm putting him to do the job. Now, the reason why people are going to disagree with this is because of the name of Jake Friend, that he's had a fantastic career. He's won the three premierships, as you said. Yeah. And, you know, he's played Origin. I think that a couple of years ago, I'd definitely throw him in quality, 100%. You know, yeah. I think he was one of the best hookers in the game a couple of years ago. But I think that Jake Friend is such a a player who just gets, he gets the job done and he does it really well. Don't get me wrong. He does the job really well, even right now, even before, all the time. But he doesn't have that spark. And when I look at quality, I need to see spark. When I see elite, I need to see like just perfectness. Basically. Especially in the modern game as we continue to speed up. Oh, exactly right. Jake Friend doesn't suit the modern game. You know, you look back a couple of years ago, he suited that game. But now the yes. modern game suits your Harry Grants, your Apicot Sales, your Damien Cooks. Look at the fast players up there. The guys below, I can't see too many actual fast players out of um, the three players mm-hmm. we've mentioned who are in Do the Job Not That Great and Unproven. You know, everyone else. Take. Jake Friend will be in the Super League by the end of this year. And Sam Verrills will be the starting Sydney Roosters hooker at the start of 2022, I believe. Yeah, we've got some hot takes coming in. That's hot what I believe. Uh, all righty. Well, let's move on to... Uh, I think people disagree with that, but I think that I'm pretty happy to put him there. Uh, let's move on to Jake Turpin. Turpin. Um, uh, we'll go with you here first. Not that great for me. I mean, he's played a little yeah. bit of halfback. He's played a little bit of hooker. Um, that Broncos. But let's not forget that the Broncos <laughs> were, you know, on paper and in, in every facet of play a better team with someone like Andrew McCulloch there who did the hard yards in defense for them. He's for me, Jake Turpin, he, that's exactly right. He, he lacks experience, um, but he also lacks that defensive resolve for me. The same resolve that, you know, has players like Cameron McInnes at the absolute quality and your Jake friends in do the jobs. For me, he can't be anything higher than not that great at this stage of his career. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I, I just don't think there's that. Firstly, there's not even a spark enough to put him into the job for me. Look, I'm not... Look, Broncos fans, obviously, you know, I'm a Titans fan. You guys, I'm wearing a Titans shirt as it is. I don't... If, I, if I'm going to rate someone, I put Payne Haas in elite, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care. I, I don't really give a shit. If I think somebody's a Broncos player and they're in quality or elite, I'll put them there. But unfortunately, the Broncos are so average. They came last last year, right? And if you're coming last, that means your spine's not great. And your hooker as we said before, is an integral part of your spine. It is yeah. basically the driver of the team. Yeah, he's not kicking. They're not kicking it really, but sometimes they kick it. But it's just not happening with Turpin for me. And I think they've got a, uh, a lot of soul searching to do there to, to really fix the direction of the team because that is where the direction comes from for me. So Turpin for me, definitely not that great. Definitely in not that great. Um, all right, who do we have next? Who do we have next? We have, uh, we have Jerry Marshall King. Do we? No. Who do we have next? Jaden Braley ahead Jayden of... Braley, sorry. Yeah, I've jumped ahead one. I've jumped ahead yeah. one there. So, Jaden Braley, uh, where are you throwing? Yeah, do the job for me. Coming off an there ACL injury, it's hard to put him in quality. He has shown elements of that, but he's also shown elements to me that show he's above not that great. 
And, um, you know, you look at the players we've currently got in that tier. Well, he's above Jake Turpin and he is above his little brother. So I've got him in do the job behind Jake Friend there. Mate, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I'm pretty, for, for me anyway, I'm, I would consider him and Jerry Marshall King as the exact same kind of player in regards yeah. to where I put him. I put them both and do the job. Yeah, no, I'd absolutely agree with that. And, and like you say, for Jeremy Marshall King, um, it, it's much the same story. Had a few injuries. Now he's starting to find his home there at Hooker. He's, again, shown us glimpses of quality. Um, this but, year will be a big telling point for Jeremy Marshall King because obviously yes. the Bulldogs, I feel, are a bit overrated right now. I don't understand why Dogs fans are saying 100% guaranteed top eight. I can't see it whatsoever. But, like, good on you. Good luck to you. I hope you do well, and I hope you prove me wrong. Do I really, though? Because I want the Titans to be there, and I think that would probably cost the Titans spot. But, you know, I think that, yeah, he's he, he, this is his year to prove. So, I guess, in a way, you could nearly say, I know you wouldn't say unproven. No, you'd say do the job. I, I, I'll, I'll go do the job. I'll, I'll safely say that he has a lot to prove this year. Next year, when we do something like this again, um, it'd be good to see him change it around and, uh, and, yeah. and, and be, be better. But yeah, I think he's, he's straight up right next to Braley there. Uh, next up, Joshy Hodgson, mate. Absolute elite for me. I think he's the third best hooker in the game. Yep. Um, only behind Coruscant and Cook currently, which is, you know, um, no slight on anyone. He was injured last year, and I think that's a little bit unfortunate. I think fans are forgetting just how good he is. Mm-hmm. A fully fit Josh Hodgson is scheming out of dummy half 24-7. He is winning the ruck. He is getting his forwards on the advantage line. He is a huge part as to why the Raiders made the grand final um, in 2019. And I think they would have gone a lot better if he was there this year. The fact he's back this year for the Raiders, for me, immediately makes them a top four team and makes them a premiership contender. I think that top four is very difficult to predict this year. Uh, this isn't a prediction is. video, obviously, guys, but it's a very difficult uh, top four this year. And I guess a lot of people say that every year, but in the same sense, I think top four is usually pretty set in stone before the season starts. Normally, majority of the time, you can see the out-and-out quality. But this year, there's probably, there's probably six, seven teams that I can't guarantee wouldn't have a chance of getting into it. You know, I think honestly, seven teams could have a chance yeah. of potentially pushing for it. But then, obviously, there's a good three, four teams that are very debatable in regards to that. Uh, but yeah, no, elite. You know, you couldn't argue it. I think that he's he's proved a lot more than Harry Grant. If you were going that way, uh, I think that I, I I personally believe that Harry Grant overall will be better. But right now, I think this is this is fair to have him in elite and Harry Grant as the top one. But I think that's going to be the most controversial one here, besides maybe Jake Friend. Uh, but I'm happy with it. Uh, next one, this is, a, this is a really hard one because obviously Manly's hooker's problems right now is just ridiculous. They don't even have a hooker. Uh, mm. So they've got uh, Manasseh Fainu here, right? Yeah, Manasseh Fainu, yeah. yeah I, would but... have, I, I, I don't know. I'd nearly put him in... Is, is, like, is that even his natural position? Yeah, yeah. He, he, oh, well, he did grow up playing 5'8". Mm. Um, but when he was playing hooker prior to his suspension, he was sharing minutes with Api Corusau and their stats were so similar. And for me, that's evidence that straight away you should be in quality. But you should be in quality. How long has he been playing, playing for? How long has he been playing for in that hooker role when he was sharing that with Happy? I think he made his debut towards the end of 2017. Okay. Um, so it was 2018, 2019. He does only have a handful of games. Because um, I'm thinking right now unproven is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm potentially thinking it. But then again, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But I, I, I think that we don't have enough to go on, really. Um, this is tight. So where would you put him? Well, I mean, look, the reason we put Jacob Liddell in the unproven rank was because our main argument was we haven't got evidence of him as an 80-minute hooker. And that's much the same story for Feinu because he was sharing the minutes with Coruscant. Um, so, look, if he's not an unproven for me, He's towards the middle of do the job, but there's an argument for either way, and ultimately I'll let you make the call, and I'll be happy with whichever way it goes. Yeah, we'll throw we'll throw him in unproven for now. We'll throw him in unproven. Prove it was this year, Hanu. Prove it was this year. Mm. Uh, next up, we got uh, Mitchy Rain. Mitch Rain. Now this is a difficult one because obviously we don't know who Titan Hooker is. There's literally three hookers that could be four hookers. Uh, you, we, they could even have another one. Huh? Huh? Uh, they could be another be one, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, for now, we have to go on the basis of the predicted lineups. And people are saying, Mitchy Rule, you're the guy that we go, buddy, go to, mate. Clark is yeah. the league column. So you had Mitchy Rain as the starter there. And where would you uh, throw him? 
I did have Mitch Rand as a starter. I think he's their most experienced option, especially actually um, as an 80-minute hooker. There, there was a time a few years ago when he was at the Dragons, he had long hair and he was the next mm. Blues hooker. He was the next big thing in our game, but he never really kicked He never him. got there. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he never for got that there. reason, I've, I've got him at the absolute top of not that great. I, I can't quite have him in do the job because he is regularly subbed out for someone like Tanner Boyd to come into hooker or Aaron Clark or someone else to come into that role. It, it's I one. think I, I and I'm a Titans fan here, and you're a Titans fan. We're both Titans fans here. Yeah, I would personally put all of our hookers in. Not that great. Yeah, right now anyway. I don't think, and this is why it's such a hard thing for the Titans this year. We said this at the beginning of the podcast is that uh, it's difficult to understand how the Titans will go direction wise because we don't really know who's going to be the sole hooker. Because, like you just said. You know, they swap them out all the time. You know, they literally yes. swap out players all the time in that regards to that hooker. Uh, I think Pete's is basically on the out of here. Like, he's been on the out of for a while, but he's not attacking enough. So, and we need attacking direction. Um, very good defensive player, but just not what we need. So, I think yeah. Mitch Rain's in top end, not that great. But I wouldn't put any of the Titans hookers above not that great right now. Yeah, completely agree. And just on Mitch Rain, I honestly think the Seagulls should look his way for a signature. Um, they don't have a recognized hooker at the moment. Yeah. And Pete's is looking for a club. So, that makes sense for me. Yeah. Um, at least it would give them a genuine option there at hooker. At least someone, yeah, who exactly who plays the position on a yes, regular level. Uh, that has he did play with New South Wales once, didn't he? He did. He played the two or three games. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, but yeah, there we go. So we'll chuck him there. Uh, next up, we have got the Cowboys. Reese Robson. Tough one for me. I want to say unproven, but I feel like he had his chance at the Cowboys last year. Definitely unproven the year before. Obviously stuck behind Cameron McInnes. Very hard to make the NRL side when you're stuck behind someone like him. But he went to the Cowboys. And yes, he was competing with Cotter and Granville, but he had every chance to make that jersey his own. And unfortunately, he didn't. So therefore, I've probably got him in the not that great category. But I am willing to give him another chance this year. I think he'll start at hooker above Granville. Um, But from what I saw last year, I think it would be a a disservice to have him in the same tier as players like Jaden Braley and Jake Friend. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be putting him with Jake Friend. That's, that's what yeah. my argument is right now. Like, I can... I, I would be putting him... And I personally... I personally prefer Mitch Rain. I personally prefer Mitch Rain myself. And I don't really, you know, really ideally want Mitch Rain. So, uh, mm. I think that... I just... Yeah, I'm not a big... I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan. And, and obviously, we saw with the, uh, with the Cowboys, you know, they, they have no direction. They have nothing yeah. right now. So that tells you everything you need to know. And if he's not even exactly the consistent there, that shows you what you really need to know. But yeah, I'll put him in not that great. And I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. Next up, we'll go with uh, Reed Marnie. Reed Marnie here. I'm going to put him in quality. Yeah. See, that's tough because I probably have someone like Jake Friend ahead of Reed Marnie just because they're very similar players. I think Reed Marnie's biggest downfall is his creativeness in attack. That's a good that point, actually. That's a good kick point. Out of dummy half. He doesn't have that craftiness out of dummy half that attracts in the hookers and A defenders. Um, but, I mean, he's made... Magnific- he is Jake Friend, though, really, like, in regards to that attack. Like, he's a, a very basic quality player in regards to Jake Friend. Like, he's... Like, I don't even know how to explain Jake Friend. Like, he's not... I wouldn't say bland is the word, but in the mm-hmm. same sense, I would use something relatively similar, but in a little bit more of a positive frame, if you know what I'm trying to say. I know what you're saying. Um, and, you know, the attributes that you're, you know, pointing to there of Jake Friend, I think Reed Marnie really shares a few similar ones. Mm. But given he's a little bit more inexperienced and obviously doesn't have three premierships, um, I probably have him just behind Jake Friend in that regard. But then, as you say, we're going off right, right now. And then he, he is ahead of Jake Friend, I would say. So I think I, we'll put, I think we'll put, I think we'll put him in. I think we'll put him in do the job, but I think we'll put him above Jake Friend just because At I the absolute top. I ha- yeah, I have him yeah. lower end, like literally last in quality. Uh, I-, I would know, you know what? Based on our list, there's no way I'd put Reed Marnie with Harry Grant and Cameron McInnes. No way. In regards to those two players. The only way I'm looking at putting Reed Marnie into quality here is if we make the executive call and we shift Grant to elite. But then I think McInnes is hard done by, which really throws things out. I think we'll leave it like this. Yeah, I-, okay. I think we'll leave it like this. But at least people, you know, we we're explaining our thought process anyway, so they know exactly kind of how we're thinking. Yeah. Uh, but that's a difficult one. It's actually been quite a difficult list, this actually, to be honest with you. But last but not least here, uh, Wade Egan hmm. of, the, uh, of the Warriors. I've got him in not that great. He'll have an opportunity this year to become an 80-minute hooker with Carl Lawton out for most of the year. Um, they've let go of Nate Roach as well. Jazz Devonga's going to play lock exclusively. So he has every opportunity to improve this year. 
and yeah. mark himself as a quality player. And, and one thing I'll never forget about Wade Egan is within his first few games of NRL, Joey Johns actually said he reminds him a lot of a young Cameron Smith. And that's obviously a, the ultimate compliment for any hooker to be compared to, you know, when we look at any other position, I'm sure you'll agree in the NRL, no matter what position, there's a debate. Who was the best to ever do it? But when we go to hooker, it's only Cameron Smith. He's at the top by that oh, far. Yeah. So to be compared to him in your first year by an immortal is a huge compliment. But he hasn't shown me enough to be anything higher than not that great at this stage of his career. I'm just as I'm as you're talking here. I've been kind of looking at this list, and I agree with everything elite. I agree with everything quality. Mm. The only thing that gets me is that I genuinely like in regards to like Jeremy Marshall King and Mitch Rain. Like, it's tough to have them both in separate positions when they're both. I feel very similar. I like I I personally put them in between the two. Um, but it's yeah. like I wouldn't put Mitch Rain into the job, and I, I I wouldn't put Jeremy Marshall in in the bottom. But like I feel like they're the exact same. If you know what I mean. In regards yeah. to like their, their overall quality right now, but <laughs> even just looking at it myself right now, there's a few changes. Like, it's if... confusing me. It's actually confusing me looking at this because I agree with I like we've gone through this and explained it as we said it, but now you it's look so at it and close. I guess it's because there's not enough tiers, so we've only got five tiers here, and you, you do. I would put, mm. for example, Mitch Rain and probably Wade Egan on their own above the other three in regards to that not that great section. Yep, I'd agree with that. Um, and I'd probably put. I put Mitch Rain and Jerry Marshall King in their own one in between do the job and the other one that we just said, basically. Right. And, you know, if we were watching someone else's video right now, man, and they had Harry Grant in Elite and maybe Jake Fan or Marnie in Quality, um, I wouldn't sit there and go, what are these guys on about? I'd sit there and go, they got a really good point. A hooker is a very, very close position to agree, yeah. uh, to agree on because there's so many. And as you say, if we had sub-tiers, it would make it a bit easier. I think this also shows the current state of the NRL right now in that the direction really is lacking and there's not really that much quality in that position. And if you look at the three teams up the top, well, the four teams up the top now, considering that he's at the storm there, Harry Grant, I guess Cameron McInnes is the exception here, but pretty much everyone who's got a quality or above hooker is a genuine contender every year. And everyone else, I mean, you take everyone else is just dodgy. That's it. You take out Cameron McInnes there and, you know, your top four are Cookie, Coruscant, uh, Hodgson and Grant and those four sides will probably be contending very closely for the top four this year mm. um, I think it really shows you know and that's what's concerning for the Titans as well for me because your, your hooker feeds your forward pack you can have the best yeah. forward pack in the competition but they're not getting over the advantage line you know, they're not having the markers attracted in so they can get that extra leg drive without having them you know being tackled low um, then realistically it all means nothing and that is perfectly painted when you look at the four at the top the four at the top are the top four teams realistically next year. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's a tight one. I would obviously, you know, Ro- Roosters will still try and get there. They'll, they've obviously yeah. got a fantastic team still. But, um, yeah, I, look, I think that I think I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how this is. And I feel like that people should understand how difficult... I guess if you're watching this, you'd still realize how difficult it is, to be honest with you. But, you know, you guys, I've set this all up for you as well. So if you want to go do your own team maker, go and do it. It's difficult, man. It's difficult, especially when you're kind of coming to a consensus. I guess if we're doing this by ourselves as well, it'd be relatively easy. But then again, in the same sense, we've both kind of had similar opinions, to be honest with you. Yeah, we have. So we both agree that Wade Egan's probably not that great? I've got him... I've got him on... Do you have him above or below me, Trey? Probably just behind. Yeah, I've got him behind. Yeah, yeah. Just behind him. So, yeah, I've got Mitch Rain, uh, Mitch Rain, Egan, Braley, um, and then the two, two North Queensland, like North Queensland and, and Broncos mm. hookers. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's fine. I think we'll do, do with this for now, but that actually made my brain, like, fry. Watch it. <laughs> yeah. at the, it's not the top part or the bottom unproven. It's just that do the job and not that great. It's frying my brain. Well, here, here's two bonus ones for you. Where yeah. would Brandon Smith go on this list? Yeah, that's another one. Obviously, I realize that, but he's not going to be. I know, I know we're going one each starter, but just, just out of curiosity, I'd have him quality. I'd still put him in quality. Yeah, you can't not put him in quality. You can't and then what him. about Tom Starling? Because he was obviously there for most of the year with Hodgson out. Uh, it's another tough one, isn't it? I'm not a big buy-in of Tom Starling in comparison to, especially if we're talking quality as in Harry Grant, Cameron McInnes and Brandon Smith, I, I wouldn't be putting Tom Starling alongside those three guys. I agree. I'd have him at the bottom end of do the job because he did still get Raiders to the finals. Yeah, I would have put him, I, I would have put him mid to bottom of the do the job, yeah. yeah. I just know a lot of people are like, oh, the Raiders did well, so you know, he must be good. 
yeah. but yeah, <laughs> I think I think that's fine. I think that's fine. So uh, we'll we'll end that there. Uh, let us know in the in the comment section below, guys, what your thoughts are. Uh, just go down there and and and, and let us know. That's going to do us for the hooker section, man. So where can everyone find you? Yeah, if you guys want to check out some of my more content uh, at Clarky's Rugby League column, I'm all across social media. Um, and just one more thing from me, guys, make sure you subscribe to BKR Sports below and um, make sure you leave your opinion in the comments, guys. We're really looking forward to replying to some of those comments there. Exactly right, lads. Exactly right. So we're going to jump off for now. Like I said, guys, we literally, I'm going to be doing literally all different uh, positions. We've got a couple of other guys in the community as well that are going to be jumping on. So uh, definitely get ready for those. Hit that notification bell as well. Smash the thumbs up button. We do really appreciate it. See you next time. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.